Zerowitz, please. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chair, and I want to thank uh, all the excellent testimony that we've heard today. My first couple of questions are going to be to ACTRA. Uh, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm very blessed in my writing to have so many people within the arts and culture sector, uh, but I know that I'm not the only, uh, that they are uh, prevalent right across our country. Um, and I'll say to you, um, I never forget the importance of arts and culture to our economy, uh, to jobs, to us sharing our stories, to us having a better understanding of each other and a way of bringing our country together. So thank you. Um, you were very clear in terms of uh, the, the um, you know, what you wanted us to do around improving economic circumstances, copyright law, and AI. And I really want to say I appreciate that. You had mentioned the Online Streaming Act. Uh, and so I wouldn't mind just asking a quick question on that. I know it's estimated to generate uh, around a billion dollars for Canadian creative sector. Can you maybe talk a little bit about how you see the impact of the Online Streaming Act on the sector in terms of uh, Canadian production and jobs? Yeah, thank you for that question. And uh, we have long talked about the importance of Canadian content and the importance of ensuring that we have the appropriate tenants in place in order to protect Canadian content. I'm very pleased and thank you to the government and all those involved in ensuring that we got the Broadcasting Act revised and now we're going through uh, the policy process of that and you will hear our voice again saying it's really important to make sure that we protect the Canadian content proponents of that, the tenants of that, so that we ensure we have a good uh, economic driver here in Canada for our own work. Eleanor talked about the fact that we have a lot of work that comes to Canada. We appreciate the work coming from streamers. We call it service work. But it can't replace Canadian content. It cannot replace our own industry with our own actors, directors, producers, writers. That is a system that allows actors, and I'll talk on behalf of actors, to actually sustain themselves in our country so that we can build our industry. When you have, there's been a disruption in the industry. Uh, and, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad disruption, but there's been a disruption in the industry. It used to be cable was the way in which you watched Eleanor perform or you went to the theater. Now we have streamers coming in and tapping into our market and benefiting from tapping into our market. It is so important that we make sure that the same rules that we've applied to brick and mortar broadcasters are also applied to streamers. They are getting the benefit of coming into our market. We should have the benefit uh, to our system of ensuring there's Canadian content that is protected. And the Online Streaming Act would, would actually allow you to do that. Absolutely. Okay. And then just one other quick question. I believe it was Eleanor that I talked about we need to be more than a service industry uh, to the U.S. Um, uh, we have to create our own viable industry. And if you have a top recommendation for our federal government that would help enable that, what would that be? It would be to support, uh, thank you for the question, it would be to support Canadian content. Uh, we really need the support in this country to provide incentive for creatives, like, like performers like myself, uh, directors, writers, producers, to stay in this country. Uh, it, 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 it's sad that if somebody wants to have a proper career, they have to leave here, and, and we don't have sustainable um, Canadian product, production here in this country. So that would be it. My last question is going to be to um, uh, Professor Pinot. I know that we've been talking quite a bit around uh, carbon pricing, um, and so I just want to just remind everyone that there's a number, and I, I really appreciate a lot of the suggestions you've had, uh, Mr. Chaglebois. I would say to you there's a number of different ways to be able to support Canadians, to support food prices, while also trying to uh, reduce our emissions and move to a low-carbon economy. Um, and I just want to remind everyone that all of our government supports are geared to inflation. Uh, we've introduced a national child care program. We've increased Canada child benefit. We've introduced a, a dental benefit. We've increased Canada worker benefit three times. And our, our carbon, uh, our price on pollution, um, we are, are giving back more to Canadians, eight out of 10 Canadians. So there are other ways to actually s support those food prices that are actually going up. And so maybe my question to Professor Pinot is, 
you know, there are those that are arguing that uh, the key measures of the cre uh, green transition, like our carbon pricing, are playing a key part in rising inflation and the cost of living. Do you agree with this? No, not at all. Uh, I really don't think uh, the price on 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 carbon is is it it, uh, it may contribute a little bit, but there are so many bigger factors that contribute to inflation that I really don't think that it is. Just the 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 oil price uh, going back to a high level contributed much more to inflation than than the carbon price. So if really the argument would be that it's the price of gasoline that is creating inflation, then we should basically make sure that people can get off gasoline by creating the investment in public transit that, that was mentioned before, uh, so that people can then go away from paying the high oil prices that are actually contributing much more to inflation than the relatively small carbon tax that we have here. MP Zerowitz, uh, MP 